Hey there, I'm Ken, this is Canadian Retro Things, and today I feel the need for speed. If you saw a video I did recently about future-proofing my Commodore 64, you may remember this. And in here we have two things. This one is for a different video. Well, it's now time to do that project. So let's head over to the bench and take a look at what this is and what I'm doing with it today. So this is a Hitachi 6309 CPU, which will be going into my Tandy Color Computer 3, taking the place of the 6809 that's currently in there. Uh, I guess you're wondering why I'm replacing the CPU with this one. Well, let me tell you about the 6309. It's a microprocessor released by Hitachi in 1982 as an alternative to the Motorola 6809. Due to the fact that it is a CMOS microprocessor rather than an NMOS one like the 6809, it requires significantly less power to run. And less power means it runs cooler. In emulation mode, it is fully compatible with the 6809. In 6309 native mode, it has enhancements such as additional registers and new instructions, which include 32-bit math, hardware division, bit manipulation, and block transfers. When switched into the 6309 native mode, many of the key instructions will complete in fewer clock cycles, which can improve the speed as much as 30%. Also, one of the nice things about buying this from Retro Rewind, it has a socket included. I was going to socket it anyway, but it's nice to have one in case I need it. Now, I guess the thing to do is to start taking this apart. Here is the Coco 3 board out of its case, and this right here is the 6809 chip that I will be removing and putting in the 6309 chip. Now, as I said in the Commodore video, I don't have all the fancy stuff, so I will be using my iron, some copper braiding, and the manual solder sucker to do this. And I think I am going to uh, remove my 512K board from here too, just so that it's not getting in the way. There we go, that's the 512K expansion board. So I will put that to the side, out of the way. Now there's a few less things to break on this when I take the chip off. Oh, looks like I have some shielding to get off of there first. I have to say that was significantly easier than uh, it was with the Commodore 64. It was just taking a bunch of these little clips off the board. They're all just clipped in through these holes. So it is ready now for me to flip it over and look and it will be these two rows of pins right here that I have to desolder so I guess I have to get to it I am of course going to try to desolder this chip properly and get it out all in one piece but as you may have seen in my other videos I'm not that experienced at soldering, so I'm not going to hesitate that if I start running into problems, this chip is only worth less than $10, whereas the board is worth several hundred dollars. So if I run into problems like a lifting trace or any other problems like that, I'm not going to hesitate to cut the legs on the chip and 
remove everything I need to that way, making it a lot easier. I'm hoping not to have to do that. I would like to save the chip, but yeah, I'd rather wreck the cheap chip than the expensive board. In the end, I ended up actually having to cut all the legs off the uh, 6809 just to get it out because, well, my desoldering skills are not um, that great yet. But I have the chip socket in there and it's ready to start being um, soldered back on. So I guess it's time to do that. And we are on to the last couple of pins to solder. There we go, and now just need a little isopropyl alcohol to clean up everything. Liberally apply some onto the board here. Give it a little scrub. And now we have to insert the sixty three oh nine. There it is. The, um, the little dot is on that end, and it goes down at that end. I'm trying to do this without getting my head in the way of the camera. That's in. So I guess I can put this back into the case and then go and test out to see if I've broken my Coco 3 or not. The Coco 3 is hooked up to the TV. So now it's time to turn it on and see if I uh, wrecked it or not. Uh, it's working. Oops, wrong keyboard. Here we go. Loading. And there we go. CPU type 6309. It's currently in the 6809 mode because the... Uh, version of the Nitrous 9 EOU that I'm using here is the 6809. I've got to download the 6309 version. Then I will be good to go. One of the things I forgot to do before I changed this chip was run a little program to uh, compare the 6809 to the 6309. However, I am currently using Nitrous 9 EOU in the 6809 mode so it should be acting just like the 6809 chip even though the 6309 is in here so i wrote this little program that does some convoluted useless math and we're going to uh test out how uh the speed does compared to the 6309 and i'm going to go download the uh, 6309 image so that I can do it on that this same program on there. Let's split the screen up and take a look. As you can see I now have the virtual hard drive image of the 63 SDC on there. So that's for the 6309 Nitrous 9 Ease of Use Edition. And 
it's loading and there we go CPU type 6309 native mode and I have loaded in the exact same program so I guess we have to run it compare the two and see how it looks Now this does take a few seconds to run, but I wanted to have a long enough program here that it would actually show a difference between the two programs running. And as I can't look at them both at the same time as I'm recording this, which I'm doing right now, I can't actually say whether this one is actually running faster, doing the math computations faster than the 6809 version but we'll find out as we you should be able to actually see right now on your screen there we're done I don't know if that was faster it felt faster but uh, yeah so that is the 6809 versus the 6309 alrighty the results are in the 6809 took 54 seconds the 6309 took 42 seconds. That means that the 6309 ran approximately 29% faster, which is right on spec. Of course, having a faster CPU that runs cooler, has more instruction sets built into it, is a really nice thing to have, but really in the end, it's all about the games that were specifically made for the 6309, like this particular one, Gunstar, from Nick Morenti's. A game I've only been able to play on um, emulators up to this point. I can now finally load it up on my real Coco 3. And it works. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed watching me put this uh, new CPU into my Color Computer 3, and I'm just glad I did not wreck anything. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, you know what you can do with the liking, the subscribing, or the commenting below because anything and everything you do is always greatly appreciated but now that I have even more games to play on my color computer 3 I guess I have to go and uh, play them you never know some of these might even turn up on my stream on twitch if you're interested in following me on that check out the link below I will See you next time.